Boy, I can't think of a better film to put out on Veterans Day than the movie about World War II soldiers fighting super Nazis. <laughs> I'm not entirely unconvinced that they didn't do this on purpose. Hey, everyone, it's me, Aaron. And Michelle. This is our post geek up reaction for Overlord, which is a World War II action horror film. There's a sentence I've never said before. Uh, just when you think that Hollywood is out of ideas, they bring you something like this. Uh, this Although is from, this is like something that's been common in video games for a it's, while. Oh, yeah, this is Wolfenstein the movie. Yeah, pretty much. I have said this so many times about video game movies whenever people say, oh, well, maybe video game movies just can't work. I mean, they've ne never made a good one, so maybe they just can't work. It's like, there are so many goddamn movies out there that if you just called them the name of a video game, they'd be a great movie that was also a great adaptation of that video game. This is the Wolfenstein video game just turned into a movie. That's exactly what this is. Uh, it's kind of like whenever I talk about Wreck or Wreck 2, and I'm like, that's Resident Evil. It's 100% just Resident Evil. <laughs> just give these guys Resident Evil. <laughs> Stop giving Paul W.S. Anderson work. Why is he doing Monster Hunter? Dear God, <laughs> Capcom's biggest fucking franchise, and they're giving it to the guy who just... <laughs> Alright, sorry. That's a that's a rant for another day. <laughs> Anywho, Overlord. Uh, it is a movie about a group of soldiers. They have to go into Nazi-occupied France during World War II, and they have to take down a tower that's at the top of a church, which is blocking all radio signals, so that way the U.S. can send uh, their Air Force in. And... When they get inside the church, they discover that the Nazis have been conducting some pretty horrifying experiments that are creating monsters. Pretty simple premise. There are little bits and pieces added along the way. But let me just go ahead and say, you did not see this. No. Uh, so I'm going to be giving you the description as well. Uh, I really, really enjoyed this film. However, however... I think people are overhyping this just a little bit. I mean, it's got like an 80% on Rotten Tomatoes, which I look at that and I'm like, eh, that's, that's about right. But the people who like this are like, this is one of the best movies of the entire year. This is what you've been waiting on. Oh, man, if you've been looking for that horror grindhouse action film that you have just been waiting on, it's finally here. It's like, yeah, it is finally here. It's called Upgrade. Uh, <laughs> it's also the Venom movie you've been waiting on. I... Mm, <laughs> That movie is easily going to be in my top ten of the year, and I, any opportunity I get to tell people to go out and see Upgrade, <laughs> go out and freaking see Upgrade. That movie is amazing. This movie ain't Upgrade. Uh, it is. It's good. It is really good. It's shot very well. When it's shot well, uh, there's like a few weird edits in here that kind of like screwed up the pacing just a tad with me. But I mean, those weren't major things. Those aren't like the reasons why I'm taking some points off on here. And I hate coming in here with a thing that I did like and being like kind of negative about in the beginning, but my entire Twitter feed this entire weekend was just, this is the movie that we need right now. I was like, eh, listen man, I'm always up for a movie about US soldiers going and kicking a bunch of Nazi ass. I'm always 100% behind that, but it's not the second coming of sliced bread here. It's, <laughs> I mean, it's pretty good. It is a pretty darn good film, but it's got a couple of problems in there. Um, but let me go ahead and talk about the positives in here. And the number one positive is the star of this movie. This is like the first time that he has had a starring lead. Uh, Jovan Adepo. Man, I hope this guy blows up. Because this guy gives, gives the entire gambit of emotions in here. Uh, he did whatever he is supposed to be just terrified of the stuff that he is learning about in this secret compound. You buy that he is just your average guy being freaked out, but he also has to slowly become like this hardened soldier because he's that guy who starts off and they're like telling a story about how he couldn't even kill a mouse, uh, that was breaking in and stealing all their food and shitting on their beds. And now he has to go up against living human beings. Mm -hmm. It's like, okay, so you gotta see his progression there. Uh, he even has like... I don't want to say it's a romance because you don't really like see it turn into something romantic, but you kind of get that sense that he's kind of got a little bit of a thing uh, for this French woman who they end up meeting, and she ends up uh, keeping them uh, secret inside her house. Uh, she's inside the village where they're kidnapping people in the night and taking them off to this church to do weird experiments on them. Um, yeah, you kind of get like, oh, there's a little, not flirting, but like, you know, he's kind of like, 
warming up to her. She's warming up to him kind of thing. It's like, oh, that's pretty sweet. So he pulls that off very well. She's got a younger brother, and he has some great interactions with that kid. Uh, so yeah, that guy is great. All the other soldiers, though, are so cookie cutter, just like, mm. it's this character, and it's this character. And I kind of feel like that was done on purpose, because it feels like this movie is supposed to be like, hey man, it's your typical World War II film. But then we threw monsters in there. So I kind of feel like them making them so much just the characters that you find in any of these World War II films had to have been done on purpose. But that didn't necessarily make it better for me. Mm -hmm. Like, there's that one guy in there. He's the guy from Brooklyn, which every <laughs> single World War II crew had to have that guy from Brooklyn talking about going and playing the stickball. Hey, yo! Oh! And, yeah, that guy was so irritating. And there are... One thing that I will give this film... Apologies for anybody who considers this a spoiler in the first five minutes of the movie. I, I've always felt like if it happens in the first five minutes of the movie, it's pretty safe. But uh, this film opens up with them on the plane going into France, and you just see, like, outside the window, other planes are getting shot down. You see, like, they are just flying through hell in here, and you get introduced to a whole bunch of people. About half of those people die instantly. Mm. And, yeah, I gotta give them some credit on that one. And even after they hit the ground, there's about another three of them that are instantly just taken out. And I kept looking over at the Brooklyn guys like, oh, you made him annoying so that he get taken out first, right? All right, he's, got, he's, he's not going to be here long, everyone. He's really annoying, but he's going to be gone soon, everybody. Oh, he's hanging in there. <laughs> he's, uh, he ain't going anywhere for a while. And I will not spoil whether or not he lives or dies in this movie. I'm not going to spoil that for anybody. But I will just say, yeah, man, if you were like me, it's like, so when does he get, like, taken <laughs> out of this movie? That ain't happening. Uh, not in the beginning, at least. You are going to stick with that guy for a decent chunk of time. <laughs> Whether you like it or not. Yeah, and I didn't. Um, also, there is his commanding officer. And his commanding officer, they, one, make him the grizzled badass. Mm -hmm. And he felt like just a parody of that. Mm. But not to the point where it actually felt like a parody. Like, that was what they were doing on purpose. Yeah. Like, he has two commanding officers. And one of them is this guy who feels like they want a young Sam Jackson because he's just up there giving like his speech from Pulp Fiction uh, when they're in the plane. And that dude felt like they tried to go overboard with him. I was like, all right, you did what you were supposed to do with him. The second commanding officer guy who like after the teams like get split up and everything and like he's the one that you're kind of stuck with as the commanding officer for the rest of the film. Yeah, that guy, it felt like they just wanted to make him cool. And I was like, yeah, it's just kind of flat. Just kind of like, he's nothing compared to the other guy who we just had a second ago, or our main character, or several of the supporting characters in here. Because even though I'm pointing at many of the supporting characters in here, like, oh yeah, they're kind of cookie cutters. There's a couple of good ones in here. There's a, a guy who is a journalist, uh, who he has like no weapons, he just has a camera. I really like that guy. Um, so... I really like that guy. I really like the main guy. So there are people to like in here, especially, like I said, the main character. That's the most important one. And the French woman who was keeping them all in her house. She's great as well. But yeah, it's just a couple of the other ones that they just kept throwing in here. I kept looking at them. I was like, eh, do we... You couldn't have done this a little bit better. Uh... You could have made them feel a little bit more like real people because there's other people in here who totally feel like real people. And then these people feel like cartoon characters. It didn't quite mesh well, and even as far as cartoon characters go, they weren't that good of cartoon characters. Uh, like I said, the commanding officer guy, he's just like, yeah, listen up. We're going to go in there. This is our job. Listen, these are horrible sons of bitches, and if you want to feed them, you got to be just as bad as them. And I was like, all right, you're just giving me the basic grizzled badass speech. Like, there's nothing really unique to that guy. Um, so, yeah, that was a little bit of a problem that I had in here. Uh, also, when they get into the church, and he sees all the horror experiments, it's damn freaky. Uh, I'll save a couple for, like, the spoiler segment, if you guys want to know the specifics of what I'm talking about, but I won't, uh, ruin it for you here. But, yeah, it is exactly the kind of stuff, like, you hear about all those horror stories about how messed up Nazi scientists were. And you watch this film, and it's like, yeah, this is that taken to horror movie levels. And one thing that I love about this is that it is a World War II film. 
but it's shot like a horror film. I gotta give them that because I've never seen that before. Like, there are gorgeous shots in here uh, that look like they were taken out of just really disturbing apocalyptic movies. Uh, like, after they get out of the plane and the plane is shot down and it's just one long shot of our hero just falling and tumbling through the air, which, grand, it's all special effects, so it's not like saying it's all one shot was really that much of a compliment, but still, even when you fake all one shot with special effects, it's aesthetically pleasing to the eye to see something just be one shot for a long period of time, mm -hmm. uh, especially when it's something as chaotic as falling out of a plane. And I watched this. It wasn't in D-Box, but it was in one of those digital sound things oh, yeah. where there were speakers every five mm -hmm. feet. It might as well have been D-Box because my chair was <laughs> shaking the entire time. Uh, so, yeah, if you have motion sickness, don't see it in that. Um, I had to close my eyes at one point. It's like, oh, God. Uh, oh, God. That was the guy on the plane uh, when it was shaking nonstop who just threw up. And it's one of the most convincing throw-ups I've ever seen in a movie, which is a weird compliment. <laughs> but so often throw-up is, here, just put a bunch of this stuff in your mouth and spit it all out once. Like, no, that was that was puke what that guy just did. <laughs> and I was like, I'm kind of right there with you, man. <laughs> um, but, yeah, so after, they la after he lands... There's a shot of all the ones who didn't make it, who parachuted out of there, just hanging from the trees as there's just fire in the background. It is a stunningly gorgeous shot. And of course, like when they're going through the uh, secret underground, underground science lab, our dog is behind the green screen right now, everybody. <laughs> Sorry about that. When they're going through the secret underground science lab, yeah, that of course looks like a horror film in and of itself. That makes sense. But even when they're just in the house, where they should be safe, there's like moans or like heavy breathing coming from behind doors and you don't know what's behind there. And yeah, they shoot it just like a horror film. And it's incredible to me how they were able to pull that off, how they were able to merge World War II film, horror film, right together. They did a masterful job with that. Um, but I will say when they get into the Underground Science Lab, yeah, they made that freaky. They made it really terrifying. But I feel like I wanted to spend way more time there. Because mm. he goes in there. He finds something there. He leaves. He comes back. We have a little sequence outside of it. Then they have to plan when they storm back inside. Then they go back in there. And for something that really kind of promised me, like, hey, man, it's soldiers versus Nazi zombies. Oh, man, weird freaky Nazi monsters, and our U.S. soldiers have to go in there and fight them. Didn't really get nearly as much of that as I was kind of hoping for. Uh, I gotta admit, it feels like we really only got, like, two instances of that in this movie. Feels It feels like this was someone stopping the movie that I was kind of wanting to see happen. Because it's them going in there to stop them from creating these monsters. Mm -hmm. And I was kind of looking at this like, oh, I thought they were actually going to already have the monsters. And this is going to be like some big, like, you see, like, the trailers, and it looks like the underground lab is like some huge, like, not to go back to Resident Evil again, but <laughs> it looks like the Spencer Mansion, where they're just going to be in there the entire time, like, just going through this. No, it's like one floor, they go in there, it's like, oh, God, what's that? Sneak around here, sneak around here, get a thing, leave. That's it. And I was like... I kind of wanted more time and like <laughs> I came promised a horror action film that in there is exactly what I came for and I didn't really get you know as much as I was, I was something for huh. okay alright but uh, yeah which again that's one of the reasons why I kind of feel like people are overhyping this I kind of feel like when people talk about how amazing this movie is they're talking about those specific segments of the movie and they are great and everything outside of that you know when they're back in the house and we're following our protagonist. That's really good, too, because our protagonist is great. But the rest of the time that we're outside of the house, it's like his commanding officer, the Brooklyn guy, you know, it's not that great. <laughs> it's kind of just a basic, average World War II film. Um, so, yeah, that's kind of my feelings towards it. It's like, it's got really good stuff, and I see why people love it so much. And I also see why, you know... Now these days, any film that stars American soldiers taking out Nazis, people are going to really rally behind. Like, mm -hmm. hey man, I understand that. Uh, so if anybody out there is like, this is one of my favorite movies of the year. I absolutely love this film. Totally understand it. But for me, it fell a little bit short of what I was really wanting. And that could be entirely on me. That could be that I bought into the hype way too much on this thing. 
Uh, but yeah, it felt like there was that great, amazing film that I won in there. But, you know, we just kept taking vacations from it uh, mm -hmm. all throughout it. Um, so, yeah, that's really my feelings. But I will say, uh, again, when it does want to be a horror film, it is a great horror film. Because basically what is going on inside there is that the Nazis are creating this weird formula thing that they inject dead bodies with it and it brings them back to life. And there is one moment in which they have to inject somebody with that. And it's not just that it brings them back to life. It turns them superhuman, mm. but, like, too much. Yeah. <laughs> like, to the point where they can't, like, tell, like, what their body is doing. Like, there is a moment, I'm not going to spoil exactly what happens, but it involves someone turning their body in a way it should not turn, which is the simplest way I can sum it up. Trust me, I am not spoiling it for you just with that description. And the dude sitting next to me in the theater was this big guy. <laughs> big dude. He was there with his wife, and he was taller than me, and I'm six foot three. And he was sitting there right next to me. And as soon as that happened, he literally did this. <laughs> <laughs> he did the Scooby-Doo thing on his wife. Like, I saw his... Like, we were in one of those theaters. Like I said, it was one of those digital ones, so you got the reclinable seats. So I saw his feet kicking all the way up and twist, and he turned his back entirely towards me just to curl up his wife. I was like, that's... It's effective, man. <laughs> like I said, that stuff was really good. And when I saw that happen, I was like, oh, man. Oh, now the movie that I was waiting on is happening. And then, though, we got to take a break for an average World War II film again. Then we get a little bit more of like the uh, of horror, stuff. horror yeah. stuff, but towards the end of this, it just becomes a superhero film <laughs> because I won't say exactly what happens, but it is it kind of stops being a oh my god that horrible thing is around that corner oh god there's a monster out there and it becomes well there's the big boss of the video game <laughs> time to go and fight this thing. I was like, oh, yeah, I'm not, mm, that ain't what I came here for. I came here for horror and action combined. There is no horror in this. It is literally just, like, going up and fighting the big super Nazi at the end of this. And it's like, well, I get it. I, I get it. There's, you know, you kind of have to have him fight this thing once, I guess. But, you know, no, I had to fight Jason fist to fist. Like... <laughs> Just blow that motherfucker up, and you're trying to blow this entire combat. I was like, all right, whatever. Um, but yeah, whenever this thing is like lean into the horror element, I think that's absolutely at its best. Um, so I'm gonna give this thing I'm going back and forth between a seven point five and an eight. I'm gonna give it an eight because honestly, I think the reason why I'm leaning towards a seven point five is just because I went in having this thing overhyped for me. So trying to. Think of what my mentality would probably be like if I had not had overhyped. I think I would be coming in at an 8. So that's my score on it. Uh, like I said, the, there are people out there who are like, this is easily my favorite movie of the year. So I was like, all right, man, that's great. Uh, I can't quite get there with you. There's nothing in here that's that bad. Like even the terrible cookie cutter soldiers in here. I was like, yeah, but I've seen worse. Uh, and there's other stuff going on in those scenes with these guys that still makes every scene passable. There's no scene in here where I was just like, oh, God, move on already. I was still engaged during every part of this. Uh, but, you know, I just wasn't really having a great time all throughout. Mm -hmm. I just, But you will have a great time at specific moments in this. Uh, so, yeah, I'm going in at an 8 out of 10. Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, so, spoilery stuff. Uh, just to let you know, like I said... They get dark with this stuff. Like, I kept comparing the, uh, this to, like, the Spencer Mansion and Resident Evil. When you see, actually, like, the experiments they're doing, it's like Silent Hill. Because uh, there's, like, a moment where they just find a big bag of meat. And it's, like, asking for help. Or there's a moment in which he hears, like, someone calling for help uh, behind a curtain. And he pulls it. It's just a head with a spine coming out of it. And it's still talking and saying, like, help. Oh, Hell, like that's all it says. It's incredibly freaky. Um, <clears throat> or like the guy who, as I mentioned, that made the guy next to me freak out. Uh, there's a soldier that's the reporter guy who ends up getting... First off, let me just say, do you want to see this movie? Um, I don't know. It doesn't seem like my kind of yeah, movie. Yeah, okay. Because I didn't want to spoil this for you if you hadn't seen it. <laughs> but yeah, uh, it's the soldier guy. And 
he uh, ends up getting shot by his Nazi who they had held captive in the, in the attic. And after he's shot, uh, our main protagonist, he stole one of the formulas that the Nazis were using, and he injects the reporter with it, and the guy comes back to life, and he starts drinking all this water, because he's like, I'm thirsty, so thirsty, oh, blah, 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 blah. oh, okay, and then he, like, accidentally, like, crushes the canteen in his hands, and like, oh, shoot, okay, so he's got, like, super strength, and I gotta give him this. That went from, oh, wow, this is kind of an interesting development, to, oh, God, no, in, like, a dime. It's like, like if Captain America gone horribly wrong. Yes, like. that's exactly <laughs> what this was. That's exactly what this was. Because he's, like, staying up, and, like, he sees the bolt wounds that were still in him. He's like, I guess it wasn't that bad. And then he's, like, twisting his body, and, like, it's just, like, kind of, like, cracking and popping. And then he sees, like, veins forming all up and down. He's like, what did you do to me? What did you do to me? And then he's, like... Freaking out and turn, and he starts turning too quickly, and his neck goes backwards so hard because he's so strong. He snaps his own neck by making it go completely backwards, so he's like looking backwards, and like his collarbones jut out like doomsday like spikes, and that's the thing that made the guy next to me just go, ah! which was such a great reaction. <laughs> And so now you have this guy running around like, what are you doing with me? And I was like, and he's like twisting his entire body around to look at people. Man, it was like gorgeously horrifying. Uh, the way that they were just able to make that go from interesting to, oh God, no, just that quickly. But it didn't feel like out of nowhere. Like it felt like, oh, that's how bad this thing is. That was great. Um... And at the end of this film, they try to give the Brooklyn guy, like, a heart because he is giving this kid shit throughout the entire thing, like, the woman's younger brother. It's like, get out of here, kid. Come back when you know how to play cards because the guy, want, the little kid wants to play baseball because he thinks all Americans play baseball. <laughs> Which is one of the scenes that is great between the little kid and our protagonist. Um, that they actually do have, like, a little exchange about baseball. Um, but at the end of this, the little kid gets kidnapped. They go in, they save him, while the Brooklyn guy and other soldier are out there holding everybody off. And the little kid comes right in, and he starts running into the middle of the fire. And the Brooklyn guy's like, ah, I'm coming here, kid. And he goes right in there, and he gets shot in the shoulder. He survives, though. <laughs> but, like, he runs in there, grabs the kid, and brings him out. And that was the thing. I kept looking at this the entire time. Like, every time that that Brooklyn guy gave the little kid shit, I was like, I know exactly how this movie is going to end for that guy. <laughs> I know exactly where this is going. And that's another problem I didn't really bring up in the regular part of the review, is that... There's a lot in this movie that's just kind of predictable. Uh, there's a lot of predictable jump scares. Like, any time that it looks at, like, a big open space, it's like, five, four, three, two. There it is. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff like that in there. But also, like, the character development. Like, yeah, you knew exactly what was going to happen to that guy in there. Uh, so, yeah, that was another kind of small problem I had with the film. Um... But at the end of the film, like I said, I tried to keep this a secret. I'm afraid I might have spoiled it a little bit too much. It ended with just a giant fist fight. The commanding officer guy, the guy who they wanted to make the cool guy in here, he gets hung up on a meat rack. And not even from the back where you could possibly survive that. From the front. And it's, ugh, ugh. Yeah, this movie does horrible body horror shit. Uh, but our hero is then in a fight with the super Nazi, the guy who they had held kidnapped in the attic, he is able to escape, and when he gets back, he's had half his face shot off. So he looks like Two-Face. He gets back to the science lab, and he grabs two of the syringes and injects himself with it. And now he's like, I am a god! And yeah, he was kind of an interesting villain in the beginning, but towards the end of this, he just becomes God Complex villain number nine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we've all seen that guy. Another reason I kind of like was like, yeah, I've, yeah. I didn't want to spoil too much about that guy, but when I talk about a lot of these characters are cookie cutters, like, yeah, I've seen this villain a lot. Um, and like I said, when he, he was just like earlier, our hero was sneaking around this facility. It was so freaky. At the end of this, they're back in the facility and they are just like now fighting a super villain. And I was like, that's not really scary. All right, well, there goes that. Again, Resident Evil rules, you have to end with them shooting a rocket launcher or something. <laughs> so. All right, well, who am I? Who am I to judge here? Um, but the commanding officer guy, he then picks up one of the needles, gives it to himself. So now you've just got two superpowered guys fighting each other. <laughs> so I was like, okay, well, all right, now I can judge. Because even in Resident Evil, 
when they have to fight the big monster at the end of it. There's still a normal guy going up against that. All right, but yeah, that kind of like took some of my enjoyment out of it. Um, also, there is one monster that they have created in there by just like injecting this guy with the syringes and you can tell they've been doing like extra experiments on him and he's kept kind of in secret throughout this whole thing. But the French woman, after she goes and rescues her brother, she has to escape the facility, but this monster gets let out and it starts running after them. And it's kind of cool because of the way it moves. Mm -hmm. Cause it moves like constantly twitching. Like it doesn't kn know its own strength inside of its own body. Like the reporter guy did where it's constantly like twitching, like, it wants to look in a direction and it doesn't just go like that. It goes like, <laughs> like that kind of stuff. That's very freaky. I'll give it that. But the actual look at the monster, like you get kind of this promise of like, oh man, it's going to be freaky. It's just a bald guy with like a big eye. It's kind of like, not even like a cyclops eye. I mean like just like one slightly, like it popped out of its vein a little bit kind of a thing. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah, it was kind of a letdown. I got to be honest with you. I mean, seeing her have to escape this thing was a great example of a combination between horror and action. Because she didn't get the super soldier serum and start fighting back. Mm -hmm. She had to find a way to escape this thing. And she had guns, and she could shoot this thing, and it would go down for a second before getting right back up. Which made it all the freakier, but still gave you that sense that, okay, it can be fought back against. So you've got that little bit of hope. And I've always said horror is all about balancing hope. Give the audience just enough hope that they can hang themselves with it. And yeah, that sequence was pretty good, but the monster looked lame. <laughs> Gotta say that. Uh, but at the end of this film, um, the commanding officer guy, uh, he's talking about how, nope, too late for me. I was never escaping this thing. You have to blow this. You have to make sure that you bring all of this down so no one can find this. And when he's giving this speech, you actually see all the other cadavers in there, like the ones where they were even keeping in like those big, I don't know what you call them, but the big like trays that you see oh, in the yeah. yeah, the big like freezer things where you're like mm -hmm. rolling out. Yeah. You see them like starting to come to life and roll out of there. So you just see like zombies rising up. That was a great moment of horror, but it came after the giant like, you know, super soldier fight. And I was like, uh, yeah, I ain't getting scared of anything at this point, man. Um, So, uh, yeah. Again, it feels like this movie, it needed to realize the horror element was what worked best about and lean into that. But that's not to say there aren't great action moments in here. Like I said, them falling out of the plane was great. And also at the end of this thing, when our hero sets off all the bombs in the church, it is, again, one long shot of him running out of the bunker, into the secret hallway, into the tunnel, out of that place, with just bombs and blast and steam coming up at every angle. And again, I know it's CGI. I know that they weren't like, well, we got one shot at this, <laughs> and if you screw up, you're kind of dead. Uh, I know it was largely CGI, but they still probably had him run through a giant thing mm -hmm. in order to like get this one long shot. And even if they did, even if it was all just CGI, like I said, even if you can fake one long shot, that's still aesthetically pleasing to the eye. It's still impressive when you're able to do that. And yeah, the final action sequence of this whole thing is really impressive. But then it goes in the ending. And the ending is them like, yeah, I thought they were gonna send us home after we did this job. I was like, nah, gotta take the fight to Hitler. Then we all get to go home. It's like, all right, that's kind of a good line. And then this hip hop song comes in. I was like, you were a World War II horror film. Why is there a hip hop song at the end of this? And man, that, The Grinch and Venom, it has been the year of, why is there a hip hop song during the end credits of this thing <laughs> that doesn't match the tone of anything else in this entire movie? Man, this has been the year for that. Uh, so yeah, it's, man, it is really a mixed bag to me, but the good in here is really damn good. So I will stand by an eight, and I do think that I would stand by that more confidently if I just had, had people tell me, this is the best thing of the year. Tap that ex excitement down, go watch Upgrade, <laughs> then you can watch this. Or watch this, then Upgrade, because Upgrade is definitely better. Because I had people tell me Upgrade was the best movie of the year, and I was like, all right, I agree. Um, it is not the best movie of the year, but it's, it's the best horror action movie of the year, hands down. Uh, so yeah, that was it. That was the post geek out reaction for what the hell was this movie? Overlord. <laughs> I almost said upgrade again. <laughs> we will watch upgrade a second time because I want you to see that. Okay. Uh, we'll watch that for the quest for the best in January. Um, 
But yeah, next weekend we have... Oh yeah, the new Harry Potter film. Oh yeah, well it's not Harry Potter oh, anymore, yeah. but it's like... Yeah, it's Fantastic Beasts. Rogue One is still Star Wars. It's... Yeah. <laughs> Listen, man. Yeah, so... Yeah, Fantastic Beasts. We have the new one of that. So, man, this has been a mixed couple of weeks here. Um... But yeah, that'll be an interesting one. You probably want to see that one. Yeah, sure, why not? Yeah, so we'll both review that one together. But yeah, thank you guys for tuning in. Let us know what you thought of Overlord in the comments down below. And come back next time. Bye, everyone. Bye.